Good evening and welcome to our virtual options evening talk. My name is Eleanor Grills, Head of School, and this recording aims to provide you with all of the information necessary to support your children with the option choice process. In some schools, this evening doesn't happen until February, choices are made and then students start their options in June. At Bidnam, we have this evening, students hand in their option choices on the 14th of October and start their new timetables just two weeks later, a week before half term, how exciting. Clearly, this is a really big step for the students and one which we need to work together to get right. We hope that your sons and daughters have had an exciting and interesting start to year nine and that they have enjoyed the carousel of different subjects over the past few weeks. We also hope that you and they appreciate the opportunity to begin the subjects they choose a little earlier in their school career. The curriculum really epitomises what a school believes is important for the education of the students and ultimately enshrined within it are a set of collective beliefs and values. For us here at Bidnam, therefore, our key principles of friendship and compassion, inspiration, determination, enjoyment and success must come into play. As far as inspiration goes, the three-year GCSE model gives students the opportunity to personalise their curriculum earlier and for a significant proportion of their timetable, choose what they want to do. There is a relatively free choice as well. Students could specialise and take two languages or go for breadth and take a humanity, history or geography, an art subject, technology and a language if they so wished. It's also, impossible to, it's also possible to choose the English baccalaureate, which is called the EBAC suite of subjects, and still have an additional two options. I'll come back to the EBAC a bit later. As regards success, it allows students more time to work on their GCSEs and facilitate more curriculum time for all of their subjects. This has been really crucial for us in terms of lockdown. In terms of friendship and compassion, it has a wide provision that will suit all types of learners and all types of ability, ensuring that no one is left out and no one is left behind. There is an academic strand. Students can do separate sciences, which is equivalent to three GCSEs. There are BTEC options, which have more of an assignment-based approach to learning and a full range of creative and practical subjects. Although it is important to note that all qualifications now have an exam component. We also have a study support element, a work skills course and English language support for students who could find the number of GCSEs too demanding. We are also very aware of our accountability to you as parents and students that we provide an uh, offer that allows achievement, enjoyment, teaches skills and knowledge and provides meaningful progression beyond GCSE level. We must also equip our young people with new ways of thinking involving creativity, critical analysis, problem solving and decision making, new ways of working including communication and collaboration and the capacity to recognise and exploit the potential of new technologies. We believe that all students need preparation to be active citizens in a complex world and a curriculum that provides challenge, motivation and progression. Before I finish this part of the presentation, I would like to say something about the English Baccalaureate. It has been around for quite a few years now as a suite of subjects and students will achieve this if they get a grade five, which is equivalent to an old high C, low B or above in maths, English, science and modern foreign language and a humanity. Every year, a number of students achieve this threshold and didn't necessarily plan to when they made their choices. And there is no extra certificate that students receive when they achieve this. It is our duty to make you aware of this though and explain to you how we address this as a school. Clearly, this does create a hierarchy of subjects and you could argue for the inclusion of a lot of other subjects on offer in this, uh, but this is the government view of a core curriculum. Now, if you already know that you want to go to Oxford, Cambridge or a Russell Group University, study medicine, pharmacy, veterinary science or other similar career paths, then the EBAC suite of subjects are actually a good idea. However, the unintended impact of this educational policy has been a decrease in the number of arts and technology subjects that many schools offer. The creative and technological industries in this country are currently world leaders. And employers tell us that students are leaving school without the skills of creative thinking, problem solving, enterprise and initiative that they want. Subjects such as dance, drama, music, art, graphics, textiles and resistant materials all develop these very skills. It is our belief that you should choose the subjects you are passionate about, good at and may be linked to your future career aspirations if indeed you know them yet. 
Finally, although I'm sure you are aware, I'd just like to remind you about some curriculum changes that have taken place that affect our children, namely the changes to all GCSE examinations and the way that they are graded. Our children will receive numbers instead of letters as grades for all of their subjects except BTEC subjects. One is the lowest grade and nine the highest, with a four being roughly the same as an old C. The Department for Education has currently set the level of an awarding pass as a four and the preferred pass as a five. BTECs are graded as pass, merit, distinction and distinction star, where a pass is equivalent to a grade four in GCSE. Although the reforms have now tracked through completely, we are still in a situation where students, parents and employers are getting used to the new grading system. So it's important to just let you know about um, how they work. These choices are important, but the most important thing is that a rich and varied curriculum is unlikely to close any doors for you at this stage. If you do not choose business now, you can still do it at level 3A level. And this is true of many subjects and also tra tracks through to degree level. You do not need to do an A level in law in order to study law at degree level. We know that moving the option forward process forward will provide greater engagement, motivation and opportunity for success for all our students. I'll now take you through the curriculum and option choice process in a, in a little bit more detail. And what we're going to do now is we're going to share with you um, some slides so that you can see uh, for an aid memoir for you for later. OK, so year nine options evening. These choices are the choice of you, the students. Um, what we have here on this slide shows the core subjects. So these are the subjects that every single student will continue to study and will do GCSEs and accept PE. So you have English language and English literature. That's two GCSEs. Then maths. You then have separate sciences. So in year nine, all students at the moment study the separate sciences of biology, chemistry and physics. As we track through, it may be that some students that, um, later on uh, move to combined science, which is equivalent to two GCSEs. So the separate science is equivalent to three GCSEs, combined science is equivalent to two. Um, whether you do combined science or separate sciences, you could still actually progress through to A-level subjects as long as you get the entry requirements into the A-level subjects necessary. So whether you do three or two separate um, with the sciences, you still get those progression routes. That's quite important to, um, to know. Core PE is not non-examined. It's there for health and well-being and is very, very important to us as a school. And religious studies is part of our core and is a GCSE as well. Moving on to the next one. This just gives you a, a little bit more information about the, the how the science GCSE works. So with the separate sciences, you've got units one to six um, from biology, chemistry and physics. Students sit exams that last about an hour and 45 minutes and they can enter either higher or foundation in those. So then you get the individual sciences that you're awarded. Um, uh, with the combined sciences, the exams are about one hour, 10 minutes. So they're, they're shorter, but they can still be done in higher and foundation tiers. That information is on the slide for you to refer back to later. And obviously, we can actually respond to any questions that people send through um, at, a, at a later date as well. OK, so this is a copy of the option form uh, that Mr. Foy is going to talk about a little bit more in a little bit more detail. Um, you can see that what you've got is four columns and at, and what students need to do is to take is to choose a subject in each of those columns. The subjects in light blue at the top, um, they are the EBAC subjects. And this is this is the only real stipulation with regard to um, option choices is that every student does need to choose at least one um, in the blue section. Um, they are the EBAC. Um, subjects and we believe if students choose at least one of those it really does help them to have a good academic core as well as the choice from the other subjects now if if people want to if students want to they actually can choose blue in all of those column there's nothing to stop you but all you all you have to do is choose one uh, from the light blue from the eback subjects uh, the rest of the option choices in, in the uh, in the light pink that you can see there um, they are your free choice completely Okay, so one at least one in the blue, and then the rest you can choose from whichever um, colour that you want. So, to to make informed decisions, you do need to think about quite a lot of things. So now, now students, these decisions are yours. 
okay? And they're the decisions that the decisions you take now, you're going to take them right through to the end of year 11. So it is important that you think carefully about what you're going to do. Think about what you enjoy doing. Think about the subjects that you enjoy doing, but also think about how you enjoy learning. So do you, do you, do you like writing? Do you like the practical side of things? Do you like numbers? Do you like, you know, uh, drawing? All of these sorts of things. And how you're assessed. You have to look into the different ways that you're assessed. Or, as I said earlier, all of the subjects have exams. They all have an exam component. And all of the, all of the subjects will require you to write to some degree, okay? So you will have to do that. But you also take into account the different ways that you're assessed. How are you assessed when, if you take food, for example? How are you assessed if you take uh, resistant materials? So have a think about those things. Quite often, the things we enjoy are the things that we're good at. If we get praised in, in certain subjects and things, that does actually give us motive, the motivation to do it, and we tend to enjoy them. So they're linked together often. Um, but also take into account what, we, what you're good at as well. And if you do know what you want to do in the future, if you've got an idea of that, think about the uh, subjects that you might need to do it. There's um, there's a government website uh, that's a career service website that is really quite good. You can you can go into you can find that and you can go and you can put in any career and it will tell you um, exactly the sorts of um, education that you need and the qualifications that you need to do it, uh, what the career prospects are like, um, what the pay is like, all those sorts of things. And it, that's that's quite a, a nice little thing to do, to decide and think about uh, what you might want to do in the future. Now, how not to choose. Please do find out lots of information about the subjects. Don't just look down at the name of a subject and get a pin and just stick it in there. Yes, by chance. So don't choose by chance. Having a favorite teacher is, good teachers are really important because they can motivate and inspire you with a, with a subject, but they shouldn't be the only reason because the thing is, is when you move into the actual subjects themselves, you might not have that particular teacher that you had. So you've really got to like the subject itself, not just the teacher. And the last one, choosing a subject because your friends are doing it is possibly the worst thing you can do because your friends aren't you. You are you, this is your life and you need to make those decisions. Okay, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to hand over uh, to Mr. Foy, who's going to take you through the rest of the options process. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much um, again for taking the time to, to watch this video. Um, uh, obviously, as Miss Grill said, we would have much rather you'd been in school with us, meeting with our subject leads and our heads of department to be able to discuss the uh, the options for your children. But we hope that this uh, this counts as a as a, a, a decent substitute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through uh, some of the the work that the school have been doing to support your children with making the best option choices. Uh, and I'm going to continue by presenting part of the slide. So in preparation for, for this choice uh, in year nine, preparing them for the next three years of, of their level two study, we have been working with your children around uh, information, advice and guidance. This has been part of the, the lessons that have been put together by each of the independent, independent subjects but it's also formed individual lessons where students have looked at the, the important choices for them, whether that be because they have a particular career in mind, whether that be because they, uh, they understand uh, a particular career path they want to take. It's, it's all tied in with them making the right choices for them uh, and, and not falling into those traps of choosing because of teachers and friends or, or, or random selection. As part of that, we've been using Unifrog. This is a, a, an online piece of software that we buy into uh, that supports students with making the right choices. And it's something that we start at Key Stage 3 and progress right the way through until they leave us either at the end of Key Stage 4 after GCSEs or Key Stage 5 when they go uh, off to university or out into the world of work. Unifrog supports students by uh, collecting information on them and their, their options, their subjects, 
and builds upon that to, to allow them to build their CVs, to look at courses that they might otherwise not have thought about, to look at colleges that they might not have thought about previously. Uh, and it opens up uh, many different avenues for our students. As part of the option process, the carousel process that I'm going to talk about in a little bit more detail in a minute, uh, year nine have all received option and a virtual options assembly where their head of year, Mrs. Stevenson, spoke them through the importance of, of engaging with each of the, the subjects that they've been trying over this, this uh, first half term. The school website is uh, really available and stocked with information to help you um, and your children make the best choice uh, for their options. And I'm going to do a, a live demonstration on how to use that shortly. So as I'm sure many of you have had conversations with your children uh, since the start of term, the carousel processes are our option, our opportunity for each of our year nine students to have a taster of each of the different option subjects. As part of the carousel process, the students have uh, two sessions, two hour long lessons with their subject teacher uh, where, they, where they practice and they have a go and they really delve into what that subject is made up of. They have the opportunity to speak to the subject teacher about how the course is assessed, the potential uh, for, uh, for future careers, and they're able to then reflect on that information in their carousel passport. This is an electronic digital uh, diary where students are able to make notes about how they felt that the lesson went, both from a, uh, seeing how they, they feel about the subject, but also they can answer uh, particular questions that they have um, and speak to the subject teachers about that. Each of your children have a copy of this and it, is a, it would be great for them to, to load this up and show this to you so that you can see the, the, the feedback uh, that they have written for each of their individual subjects. So in terms of preparing for their, their option choices, the option forms that uh, you, were see, you were shown earlier are going to be coming out uh, a week on Wednesday, uh, and they are going to be shared with uh, students for them to be able to bring them home, having had at least one session in each of their carousel option choices, but also they've received at least two of our information advice and guidance lessons, where we stress the importance of them choosing options for the right reason. Like Ms. Grill said, I'm, I'm a, a strong believer of a students choosing options because they're going to enjoy them. If, you're going, if they're going to enjoy them over the next three years, then they're more likely to engage and therefore um, do, do well in that particular subject. So in preparation before making these option selection on these forms and handing them in by the deadline, which is the 14th of October, we encourage students to go and speak to their carousel teachers, ask the questions about what they will be studying, uh, speak to the students that already take those subjects. Many of our students have uh, friends and relatives in, of, in older year groups, so they have real life experience of what it's like to take these subjects, and we encourage students to speak to those, those individuals. We also ask um, students to speak to uh, not just subject teachers, but just teachers in general, their tutors, their head of year, myself as the raising standards leader for Key Stage 4, and, and ask the questions that they, they, they want to. It doesn't have to be face to face. It can be quite daunting seeking out a member of staff. So we encourage them to send e emails to their members of staff, uh, write a, a note and leave it to reception, any way that we can keep these lines of communication open, especially in, the, in this current time where we're, we're having to move more things on, online and, and making more things virtual. So this is just a reminder that Wednesday the 14th of October is our, our deadline for forms to be handed in. It's quite a short turnaround for us in terms of being able to build the timetables ready to start that uh, for timetables to be handed out on the Friday uh, that week, ready for the options to begin the week before half term. So what I'd like to do now is just show you where you can find some additional information should you have any questions after watching this video. Uh, the, the school website is stocked with information that you will find useful. As you can see, the, the school website is split up into, into many different sections. So we have a, uh, a section on our subjects, general school information, a parent section, news, and a contact us. The area I'd like you to focus on for answering any questions around the options process for year nine is under the curriculum tab. 
Under the key stage four, year nine, 10 and 11, by selecting that option, you can find lots of information about key stage four at Biddenham. And under the curriculum information tab on that left-hand side there, it takes you onto its own page. The linked booklet at the top here, the key stage four curriculum booklet is full of information about all of the different option choices uh, that are available, but also about the breakdown for each individual subject. So if I just to scroll down for a second, you can see here that we're split up into sections of what will you learn? How will it be assessed? What are the future opportunities? And who could you contact for any further information? And in most cases, that is either the head of department or the head of faculty. Back on the school website, under that same option again, under the, uh, the curriculum tab, at the bottom there, we have the careers info, advice and guidance. And there are some fantastic links there to Unifrog, which is the software that we've been using with year nine students, building their own uh, CVs and looking at uh, subjects, but also potential careers uh, and helping to, to broaden their, their, their minds in terms of what their, their options are post, uh, post 16. So as I said, we encourage students to speak to, to every, any member of staff at school, but I have put a couple of contact details up here for, uh, for uh, members of staff that you might find useful uh, or you might be specifically wanting to seek out. At the top there, you have Mrs. Stevenson, who is the head of year nine, Miss Purvis, who is our in-house careers advisor, Miss Mason, who is our English as an additional language coordinator, Mr. Forster, who is our special educational needs coordinator, Miss Eckett, who is our deputy head in charge of curriculum and timetabling, and my details are there as well as the raising standards leader for key stage four. I do hope that you found the video useful. As uh, I've said many times, if uh, any, any questions you have, please do not hesitate to uh, either drop us an email or by contact us in the details on the screen there, or by just calling into school and asking for, for the relevant person. And we'll be happy to give you a call back to discuss any questions that you might have. Uh, and just a, a final reminder, the deadline is Wednesday, the 14th of October. Uh, so if we could have option forms in by then, that would really help us out. Thank you very much for your time today. Uh, and as I say, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact us.